Hey guys, this is Michael at NWA3D, and today we're going to take a look at Autodesk Fusion 360 and kind of go through just a basic instruction. We're going to try and make just a just a simple keychain, and so we're going to kind of talk through the process of how we can create that and what we need to do in order to utilize all of those tools. So first, the first screen you'll be pulled into once you log into Fusion 360, so you will have to install Fusion, and then you will log into your Autodesk account, and then it'll pull you into this area, allowing you to create new projects and also select from any data that you may already have. So if I click into my NWA 3D project, you can create a new one here if you want to organize a little bit better. You'll notice that I do have multiple different designs inside of here in which I could go back and edit. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that as is, and we should have an untitled, which means we're creating a new object as is. So let's go ahead and close out of this panel. And now we're going to have our full workspace available to us. So let's talk a little bit about camera controls before we get into it. If you click in on the scroll wheel, you should be able to pan your camera around. And then if you hold shift and click in on that same wheel, then it should rotate the area for you. And then the zoom wheel is going to go in and out. And those should be most of the camera controls that you need to know in order to manipulate your objects or your build space in order to look at everything correctly. So let's go ahead and create our first sketch in Fusion 360. So if you notice up here on the top left, there should be a create sketch option. And also if you see many more options on my screen, all you have to do in order to add those is hover over one like so. And notice that it has this add to toolbar button right next to it. And so you can add all of your favorite tools to the toolbar if you would like to do so. And that's kind of up to you. So I have mine that are pretty simple and set. And those are what I like to use the most. So let's go ahead and click on create sketch. And now we select one of the three axes available to us. And since we're making a keychain, I'm going to go ahead and select the bottom most axis or the XY. So now I, if we look over here to the right hand corner, we should be able to see that we are looking at the top of the sketch, which is exactly what I wanted. And I can actually draw from this point on. So in order to create a keychain, I'm probably going to need at least some surface for it to sit upon. So in a two dimensional aspect, I can either create a rectangle, I could create a curved rectangle or anything that, you know, maybe a circle, whatever you kind of feel like putting as the base. I'm going to just construct a basic rectangle. So I'm going to click on my two point rectangle. You can also click the R button. It should immediately load that in. And now I'm going to draw it from the center point. I'm going to go ahead and make it, let's say 25 millimeters is about an inch. And so if you're not in millimeters and you are in inches, it's just up to you. You would like to change that settings, you can change it here at document settings. So I'm going to leave it at the same one I'm at, and I'm going to make it, let's say, so it's about two inches by one inch. Let's be an inch tall, and let's go with about 90 for the so that's just right under about four inches long. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit here and kind of pan over using my mouse button. And now I have my constructed area. If you want to, you can always dimension this area just by clicking on the device and selecting sketch dimension or selecting D. So I do like to hit the D button. It's a lot quicker, a lot easier. So if I select D, it should immediately create a dimension for myself. And then I can do the same for the sidewall just so you guys know how thick and how long this is. So now once I have this first image created, I can modify this if I would like to, and I'm going to cut some corners here. So I'm going to actually use the option that is Fill it. And so what I meant by cut corners is that I am actually going to trim off some corners and make them round because I prefer some round corners. I think it looks a little bit nicer. 
And I selected both of those values and it kind of rounded off the corners on each side. Okay. So that's just an example of it. If we did want to change that value, I can double left click on the R5 and I can change this to 10 if I chose to. And hit enter and notice now it is a biggest, bigger radii curve. So if you notice that both points are going to be tangent to lines here, and then we're going to have the curve that's a little bit nicer. So another point I might want to do, if I wanted to create the same idea just with a flat surface, I can connect it from one dot to the next, and I'm going to use the same radius that it used earlier. So I'm going to connect from those same points that you notice that these two are going from. So it goes from this point to the second point here. So I'm going to do the exact same thing here. And then I'm going to select trim option, and it's going to take away a little bit of anything that's intersecting. So I'm going to trim away those two edges. And I'm going to use this as my surface for my keychain. So now that I'm happy with the surface and I can go ahead and click stop sketch in the top right. Now it's going to put me back into a three dimensional environment and I can grab the view cube up here also to rotate the area around or choose preset areas to look at. And I am going to extrude this at this point so that we can see what is going to look like. So I'm going to stay on the top view and kind of rotate to this angle. Now I'm going to click the extrude button in order to create a three dimensional object. So click on the body and it's going to select operation of new body. We're going to go in one direction. So we're just going to bring it up the Z axis and I'm going to increase it by, let's say we want it three millimeters tall. So not super tall, pretty short, pretty tinny, but it's also a keychain, So we don't want it to be massively huge. So now that I have it, it's right around three inches long. It's going to be about one inch thick. And then it's also just quite thin. And now we can edit anything else we would like to put on it. So if I want to put my name or any kind of text here on the surface, what I can do is I can come back into the sketch area. I can create a new sketch, but instead of selecting one of these planes, I'm actually going to select the face of the object that we just finished making. And it's going to pull me into another sketch, allowing me to create new objects on the face of the object. So now I'm going to go ahead and go down to text and I'm going to select my start position. And then let's say I'm just going to put my name. Oop. So I'm going to hit control Z to redo that because I didn't like the position it was in. And I'm going to simply retype my name. So of course I don't want it going off in that direction. So I can take this small little handle right here and I can rotate it 90 degrees or 180 degrees, excuse me. And then also if I grab the middle section, I can pull it down into the area. So I'm gonna put it about in between right there. And then I can select the font if I would like to change it. Okay, I like that one and click OK. So now I have text on top of it and I'm going to create another form of text directly underneath. And I'm just going to name it NWA3D. And then this time I'm going to use the flip horizontal flip option here. So notice it flipped it 180 degrees and then I'm going to vertical flip it to move it the other way. And I can just pull it down. So I'm not quite big on that font. You are welcome to select whatever you would like. And I'm going to italicize that and click OK. So now I have two different types of text on my keychain. And I'm going to create a small emblem for myself and I'm going to make it out of a polygon. So if I go ahead and select the circumscribed polygon right here, and then I choose my starting location, I'm going to put it, put it right there. And now it's going to ask me for the radius that I choose. So let's do the radius of five. 
hit tab in order to swap to the next number that it requires. And this is asking how many sides we want, and I want to make it a triangle. So I'm going to type in three and click enter. So now I do have a triangle in a weird position, and I want it to be completely flipped the other way. So if I select all of the three edges, and then right click and select move and copy. So now it's going to ask me to move the object, and I am going to rotate it. So it should have an X, Y, Z angle. And if I select this area here, I can rotate it around 180 degrees and then pull it back down to the position it was originally at. So it looks like it's a little bit big for the area that I want it to be in. So I might have to scooch it over a little bit like so. And click OK. So now I have a triangle inside of here. And if you want to, you can also deform the triangle while it sits. And I'm going to create a couple more triangles inside. So I'm going to do a triangle the opposite way. So I'm just going to select the center point of that triangle, select one of the outside walls. Ooh. Let's try that again. Go to polygon, circumscribed, click in the middle, choose the wall, and select three. And we want it to be half the wall, right? So if the original wall was Three, we want 2.5 and click enter. Now I inverted it and now I have a triangle in the middle. So I can finally stop this sketch and I can extrude what I would like. So I'm going to turn here to the corner, like so. Move off to the side a little bit, just by selecting the view cube. Now I'm going to extrude each of these. So I'm gonna extrude my two names. And I'm just going to pull them out, let's say one millimeter. And I want to make sure that the operation is joined, so each of the pieces is joined to each other. And then I can click OK. It'll compute the extrude, and notice that my triangle all of a sudden disappeared over here on the side. And that's not what I wanted. I want it to appear, but I didn't want to extrude it in the same direction as these. So in order to change that, what I can do is I can come back into the sketch area and click on this down arrow. And it's going to show me the individual sketches I had previously. So if I click on this light bulb, it'll actually show up the sketch that was underneath, and I can re-extrude this triangle. So now I can click Extrude, and I can click the three triangles I want. And I'm going to select Cut this time, so that it goes down into the area. So I'm going to cut one. Excuse me, I'm going to cut negative one so that it goes down into the area. Otherwise, it would give me an error. So if I rotate it aside, you should be able to see that that is coming down into the surface. So now all I need to do is click OK. You'll notice that it has extruded in the opposite direction, or we have created a source of negative space. Now I can unclick my sketch three so that I can see just how the model is shaped itself. So we do need one other thing before we complete, complete this, and we need to create a third sketch and sketch a circle onto it and make it a hole so it can actually be a keychain. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new sketch, select the same surface I did before, the face of it, and you can select any face you would like, as long as it's on the front or back. And then we can select center diameter circle, and then choose a spot for our circle to be extruded. So I'm going to do seven millimeters, hit enter twice in order to form the circle, stop the sketch, and then this time I'm going to extrude it one more time. And I'm also going to cut in the sense. I'm just going to drag it through to the other side. So if I rotate the side here, I can view how deep it is going. And then I want to make it three deep, so it goes all the way through and click OK. Now we have a hole entirely through our object, and we are prepared to export our file. All we have left to do in order to do that is to click on this 3D print or make. And then we it asks for a selection, so I'm going to select the model. I don't want to preview it. I do want it to be a high resolution, and I don't want it to be in an output. So I'm going to unselect that and click OK. And now it's going to ask me to save my STL file, which is the type we want. 
and I'm going to save it on my desktop so I can find it later. So this is going to be my keychain. And click save. And now it is exported from Fusion 360 and it should be ready to slice and print. So I hope you guys had a good time here on Fusion 360 and you learned a little bit of something from it and good luck 3D printing.